Algebra 2 honors will cover 8.6, the section about translations of sine and cosine. So mainly we will look at the structure of equations of either sine or cosine, or at the same time, then continue from the A value and B value that are affecting amplitude and period directly that we'll focus on C value and D values from the structure of the equations of sine and cosine continuously, okay? So the general form The general form of sine or cosine as an equation will go like this. So we already figure the A affects amplitude and B placed in front of X affects the period. Then now we have C and D, right? Then especially the D, as you already expect, that D added or subtracted at the end of the equation, it's the same manner with all other functions that we've been learning so far, it's going to involve with the vertical shift. So D will involve the vertical shift. So with the positive number, it shifts the graph sine or cosine up or down, right? It's positive, it's, 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 a, it's a shifted up and negative, it's shifted down, right? So you can connect the fact with all other function equations and how it worked with um, the D value at the end, and then it was um, involving the vertical shift, okay? So then what happens here? So um, the given graph, where is the midline currently? The midline, as you can see here, is there. The midline was defined the horizontal line that is located in the vertical mid position of the highest point and lowest point of that wave, right? Then midline is there. Then, if this is x axis here, and obviously this midline was shifted up a certain unit, then you can ask yourself this questions. Then you can figure out what d value from the equation should be changed, right, based on the current graph after it was transformed with the vertical shift, vertical translation. Okay, then let's move on to the next slides to see. What C value does. Okay, then now we are focusing on C there. Then as you already anticipated based on the very similar structure from all other functions, the C value will especially involving the horizontal shift, horizontal translation. But or especially for the trig functions and sine and cosine, and there's a special terminology for horizontal shift. But I don't really care if you just still stick to the um, language that horizontal shift here, and then it doesn't really matter. But sometimes you will hear 
someone's saying phase shift, but that's nothing but um, it's exactly the horizontal translation that you can observe um, from sine or cosine or any other trig functions. This one is called phase shift because it's just, you know, there is like a phase that you can see um, repeatedly, right? So repetition is just a horizontally moved to the left or right. So sometimes, you know, the problem would mention the phase shift. But if you know what phase shift means, it's just simply technically the horizontal shift, right? Then you will know what they're talking about. Okay, then now the C value on the equation structure will slide the shift of the sine or cosine to the left or to the right, right? Then as you remember from all other function equations, C value being negative and it's gonna move to the right. C value inside of parentheses being positive then you will expect your graph shifted to the left, right? Okay, then one thing that you need to remember that you can go ahead, verify the C value inside of the parentheses and literally interpret the transformation that you would see from your graph is just simply C unit to the right or C unit to the left is only when B that involves with the period is one. Involved with um, the B value when B is one, right? And you can just see the C value, right? And then if it's a positive, and then it's gonna move to the right, uh, left, and then it's negative and move to the right. And then that's just simple translation. But that's not the case that you can guarantee to see from now on. And as in fact, I prepare this copy of one of the practice problem assigned within 8.6. It's a little bit differently working when B value in front of the X inside a parenthesis is not one. And I just copied this one from here. So we can just discuss and then see what happens if B value is not one, okay? So the given transformed equation is y equals sine parenthesis 3x plus 2. Then within the given answer choices that we can verify B and C here. So now um, technically the D value is zero because I don't see any specific D, but I can verify my C value being two right here. So this is C value two. Then the B value is not one. And then this is B. B is three here, right? Then within the answer choices that we can pick is based on this equation. Then now from D being zero and there is never going to be any translation vertically, right? But from D, from, from C, which is the value two, positive two, then we can expect our graph will translate it two units to the left. So that's one option for us to choose. And also I can see The B value being three, how do we recognize the B value? It's placed in front of the X, right? And that three will affect the period 
it's shrunken horizontally three times or you can simply think about it as it's going to be shrunken into like a one third so if the two pi the original period was like this long horizontally and then it's going to be shrunk into one third right so in order to help you guys to, to see what is actually happening on the graph I prepare this animation here. So let's start from the parent function of sine here. So now, this image is the parent function of sine. So obviously this function is a sine, not cosine. And the parent function of cosine graph would have starts from zero, right? And then it goes up around pi over two, and then it's the highest point one, and then it passed through zero again at pi. So that's why it's approximately labeled on the x-axis as a 3.14 about there, so you can verify it. And then it's gonna go continue like this. Right. Okay. Then from this parent function, from this parent function, if we translate this parent function two units to the left, now you are seeing the translated graph in green. So now from zero, it was shifted to the left two units, and then now I can verify that certain point is at negative two, right? Okay, so now we are done with that step. Then from the green translated graph, then now we have to make it as three times smaller horizontally, shrunken horizontally, in one third period, then let's see what happens. Now, from the green one previously, if we shrink the green wave one third horizontally, then now it's gonna be the orange one. You see that? Then if not easy for us to visually see one third horizontally shrunken, right? So now what we can compare is when we shifted to the left by two, it was here, right? But since we are shrink, shrinking, this green one into one third horizontally. Now, physically, this negative two coordinate kind of shrunken towards the center. And then now it's shifted there. So it's about 0.6667. Six, 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 How do we know? Because if you recognize the value inside, which is 3x plus 2, then actually the anchor point that we focus on will be shifted to the left by two units and then shrunk in one third. Then consequently, it's going to move the original anchor point into a certain coordinates that you can definitely algebraically find and set it up by setting it up by zero and then you solve it. So if you solve it, then it's going to be 3x is negative 2 and then x is negative 2 thirds and then this is about point negative point six six seven 
And then that's obviously gives you the accurate algebraically proven calculated point of after you're all done with the transformation. Okay, any questions so far? I know this is really confusing though. Are we good? Okay. Then if you're good, then I will summarize this into next page here. Here, so when B value inside of parentheses is one, it's easy. You can just verify the C values and then it tells you how many units, are how, what direction your horizontal shift happening. But when B is not one, when B is not one, you expect there is also period change follows. Then in order to get the actual completely transformed shifting point from the parent function will be simply calculated by this manner. You just copy whichever the expression that you get inside of the parenthesis, and then you set it up by zero, right? Equal to zero, then you solve it, and it's gonna give you the exact coordinate and, and the direction, then, then you can just find it there, right? Okay, then let's do one example following. So now, the transformed equation that I've given to us is graph y equals cosine of x minus one plus two. So this one is easy because I recognize the B value that in both of the period is one. So now let's go by all key features of cosine by recognize the A, B, C, D values from the equation first. So for amplitude, where do we find it? Okay, in front of cosine, I don't see any particular number. That means there's invisible one there, right? So then that will conclude amplitude being absolute value of one. So from the parent function, actually there's no change. And what about phase shift? Phase shift will be one to the right because B value itself is one and the C value is negative one. So this will involve the way to the right. How many units? One unit. Then how about period? Period, you look at the B value in front of the X. Then B value itself is one. So here invisible one again. So then B is one. Then that means you have to put B under there. Then it's gonna make two pi over one and which is two pi. And then consequently, there's no change in period. It's good. Then what about midline? Midline is up two from where? The D value right here. Because D is two. Okay, any question? That's awesome. <laughs> okay, then. If we finally graph this after you find the key features and the graph will look like this then. Now we can verify the midline passing through y equals two because the D value at the end of the equation was supposed to translate whole graph up two units. So now midline is here. Then 
one unit to the right. So this must be about labeled one here. Because we verify one period of cosine like this. So then the green highlighted portion will be the very first period that we can observe, right? From zero, and then it was shifted to the right by one unit. So this must be one here. Then what else? So then the amplitude was one, so I can verify it. So from the midline, then it goes one up, and then it goes one down, and then that's amplitude, absolute value one, and what else? And I guess that's it, right? So that way you can grab transformed either sine or cosine graph from the parent function of each. Okay, how was it? So this is all that I included during the actual Zoom instructions of today. But if you check the notes later, then the notes have a lot more slides following this. And it's gonna include extra examples. And each example will give you animated step-by-step -step approach there for you to try first, and then you can check your work, right? So I hope you can utilize extra examples that I provided and uploaded notes, right? And then also you can try practice problems again and if you haven't and then you can just do it based on this instruction that i had today this morning okay